Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Friday, November the 19th, 2021. Today's show, ladies and gents, boys and girls, basketball season is officially back on. As we're celebrating here on this Friday, as the Gamecocks locked down a big win on Thursday night at CLA over the UAB Blazers by a final score, guys, of 66 to 63. I'll talk about the game in its entirety, give my full takeaways, thoughts from a big win win for Frank Martin squad guys also I'll talk my biggest takeaway from last night hand out the inaugural shooter shoot award as well as talk about what's next for Carolina basketball on the upcoming slate all guys it is Friday I'm locking in my official prediction as the Gamecocks take on the Auburn Tigers under the lights tomorrow night at Williams Bryce Stadium in a big time SEC matchup and the final SEC game for Shane Beamer squad in this 2021 football season, guys, a ton to get into here on a Friday. And, of course, it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, for all your moving needs, be sure to contact our friends at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. Of course, if you have any other questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. To be good, and the fun is in the winning. Folks, let's have a Friday. Happy Friday, TGIF. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, here's the Spurs of the show, as always. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We have got a ton to get into here on this Victory Friday, as yours truly is talking to you just an hour or so after the Gamecocks. Big win at CLA, and of course, we're also talking football here on this Friday, guys. Also, excuse my voice. It's crazy. Uh, you can tell yours truly got rowdy at the CLA and got fired up because I feel like I'm losing my voice before the Gamecocks even play a game this weekend tomorrow night at williams Bryce Stadium. But either way, really excited to be chatting with you all here on this Friday, guys. A ton to get into, a ton to discuss, and I thank each and every single one of you for tuning in. And guys, I want to start there again. Thank you all so much. And I hope this show finds you well, no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're on the commute, you're in the office, you're in the job, you got the day off, maybe you're in class, whatever it is, guys, again, thank you all so much for taking the time to tune in. I do also want to say those who came up, said hello at the game at CLA, showed their love and support again. Thank you guys so much. And I, I can't really express and tell you how special it is and how amazing it is when you guys come up and show that love and support and we talk and interact. And, you know, I've had the the opportunity to meet so many great Gamecocks and so many people who rock and roll with the content, everything we do. So again, I do want to take a moment to just say thank you all so much. That That means so much to us, man. That means the absolute world that you guys, again, you know, feel so compelled to say hello and say, hey, I, I rock with the show and support what you guys do. And I mean, it just means the absolute world, man. It, it's truly a blessing. It's truly flattering. And again, without you guys, TSUS would not be what it is and what it is becoming. So again, thank you all so much. Those who showed love last night at the CLA. Um, really quick reminder, guys, and we'll dive into it. Of course, tomorrow, the TSUS tailgate will return to CUL spots 93 to 96. We'll be out there around 1230, 1 o'clock or so. Just look for the TSUS and Big Cock Club flags flying going to be a really really good time tomorrow looking forward to the tailgate looking forward to a very very fun day in columbia south kind of before the gamecocks take on the auburn tigers but right now guys we've got to start with basketball on the hardwood the gamecocks getting a huge early season non-conference victory over the uab blazers by a final score of 66 to 63 and guys i told you the importance of this ball game and how this served, as I really felt, 
a swing game for this 2021-2022 basketball season. I want to start here as well. UAB, guys, is a good basketball team. Do not get it twisted. UAB is one of the best non-Power 5 schools around, a team that most likely will find itself in the NCAA tournament. They're obviously very well coached with Andy Kennedy, a guy who spent over 10 years coaching SEC basketball. That was a really, really, really good win last night over a quality ball club. You know, you saw UAB open up as a two and a half point favorite in the game. They're a quality basketball team. I saw some comments, people saying, oh, this is embarrassing. You're opening up as an underdog. Like what in the world? No, UAB is a good basketball team. And that was nothing short of a great win last night. I'll tell you guys this too, sitting in CLA, sitting in Colonial Life Arena, that was as much fun as I've had watching a Gamecocks basketball game in quite some time. And, and, and I don't know really what it was, guys. It was hard for me to really put my finger on it, if you will. Certainly the play on the court helped. But there was a different energy in the building, in my opinion. There, there was a different buzz. It, it didn't have the feeling of being in there, feeling like, oh, I'm dreading watching South kind of basketball. Oh, this isn't very fun. I'm not enjoying myself. That was a fun game last night. That was fun to watch. And again, it helps when you're making shots. It helps when things are going your way. It helps when you have a double digit lead, all things that happened last night, but you felt a different energy in the building. Again, for the first time in a long time, I watched Gamecocks basketball and I felt like this is fun. These players are fun. This attacking style is fun. This relentless defense is fun. Hey, Watching Frank Martin coach is fun. I had fun watching Gamecocks basketball for the first time in a long time, in a very, very, very long time. Folks, shoot or shoot. How about my dude, Eric Stevenson? How about this basketball team as a whole after starting two and one, right? Coming home, you needed a big victory. We talked about simply put, you just had to shoot better, right? You just had to shoot better. 42% from the field, 47% from three, which really, guys, you could argue was the difference in the ball game. And also, guys, get this. You won the game by three points. When's the last time this was the case? You shot 70% from the charity stripe. 14 to 20 from the charity stripe. On the contrary, UAB. 63%, 15 of 24 from the charity strike. I mean, when's the last time we looked at a Gamecocks basketball team against a quality opponent and said, well, free throws was the difference in a positive light, in a positive light, right? Now, there are many things that need to be corrected. And obviously, the end of that game got much, much closer than we all would have preferred. I'm not surprised UAB stormed back. And Andy coach ba and Andy Kennedy, I should say, coach basketball team, they're going to play hard. They're going to play to the final whistle. I'm, I'm not shocked at all. They stormed back and made a come case. Like I said, guys, that's a good UAB team. They will have a very, very good season. They will most likely find themselves in the NCAA tournament. But the numbers that stand out for South Carolina, and the big one is this, 22 turnovers. And the, the greatest luxury for Frank Martin is he can now coach and correct mistakes coming off a of victory, right? It's much easier to do that. It's much easier to correct those mistakes and, you know, point out the mistakes and correct them coming off of a victory. It softens the blow a bit, but... 22 turnovers. We saw a lot of sloppiness, a lot of bad passes. That's something certainly, you know, I look at, I think it's a bunch of young guys, new players that are looking to make plays, maybe at times forcing the issue, if you will. Um, I also think there's mental mistakes. They're just mental mistakes. You know, you got a guy like Jermaine Kuznar to make some really bad passes last night. You look and say, hey, you're a leader. You're a veteran player. That can't happen, right? So those things have certainly got to be cleaned up. If you can do that, Sky's the limit for this basketball team. But the bottom line is this, guys. You got the dub. And it's the new pieces that are coming together. It's the new pieces. You look at the stat line. It's the new pieces, guys. 
Eric Stevenson leading the way with 15 points. James Reese, what a game he had. I mean, he's been stellar since the exhibition, but went on an 8-0 run by himself. Four of five from three, by the way. 14 points for him. Wildens Levesque, a known commodity with 13 points. He was big down low for you, seven rebounds. And how about this, by the way? Shout out to Wildens Levesque. Seven for eight at the free throw line. Guys, he's a big man. <laughs> big men do not shoot that well from the free throw line. Seven for eight. How big are those seven points, those free throws that he made, right? Devin Carter, Devin the highlight real Carter with 12 points. I mean, this dude, you know, John Rothstein actually tweeted about it, saying that Devin Carter, buy stock now. Dude is an animal, just a straight-up athlete. And you think about it, guys, he's this good right now. He's this good right now as a youngster. <laughs> just wait till he actually figures out what's going on. Of course, Jermaine Kuznar contributing with seven points. But it's these new pieces, guys. We talked about it, right? It's these new pieces that you feel like if they can come together and how quickly they will. And here's the kicker too, guys. You won this game and you're doing all of this without Keyshawn Bryant in your lineup. And I talk about the new pieces, guys, and that's really my biggest takeaway. My biggest takeaway from last night is this. The pieces are there for this basketball team to have a good year. Now, how do you define a good year? Is a good year the NCAA tournament? I don't know. You know, the schedule is going to get really tough in SEC play. The draw is really, really tough, right? Which is what makes this win so pivotal because I think, you know, looking ahead, which we're going to do in just a second, you have the opportunity to build some massive momentum, right? Early in this season, especially. But... The pieces are there, in my opinion, to have a good season. The pieces are there to have a good year. Again, how do you define a good year? I don't know, but I love what I'm seeing from some of these new guys. Like I said, Stevenson, Devin Carter's a freak, right? James Reese has been incredible. If Stevenson's hot, he's as good as any scorer on your basketball team. And then you've got your veteran guys in the Kusnards and the Leveques. You bring back a Keyshawn Bryant. Like, the pieces are there, in my opinion. The question will just continue to be, how quickly do they gel? How quickly do they come together? But again, guys, what I loved seeing last night, again, it looked like a team having fun. This looked like a basketball team having fun. You know, James Reese goes on the 8 run, and, you know, they go to a timeout, and he's looking at the student section, which, shout out the student section for showing up, by the way. You know, was it a great crowd? I won't say that it was, but those who were there were rowdy. Those who were there were engaged. So kudos to everyone who showed up last night. You were a difference in the ballgame, in my opinion. But James Reese, you know, motioning to the student section and getting them fired up, and it just looked like a bunch of guys having fun. Again, was it perfect? Certainly not. It was sloppy at times. It was ugly at times. Hey, let's also acknowledge the defensive effort. Making UAB uncomfortable, that felt like a very, very typical Frank Martin-style defensive effort. You held them to 34% shooting. Here's the big number, 27% from three-point range, which UAB, guys, is a really, really good offensive team. Very good offensive team. One of the best in college basketball when they're on. You turn it over 22 times. You also forced, though, 15 turnovers, right? So. That was huge. That was huge for sure. So, again, that felt like a very traditional Frank Martin effort on that side of the ball. But overall, a, a huge win, guys. I mean, this is a huge early season win. And I told you just for me specifically, and I, I half joked about it after the game, but basketball season's back on. Basketball season is officially back on as I do the arrow, the shooting arrow motion right now behind the mic. I know you can't see it as I do the shooting arrow motion because shooters shoot, baby. Shooters shoot. And that's what this team is. It's going to be ugly at times. It's going to be hard to watch at times. But I think this team's going to be fun to watch. Basketball season's back on. This was a huge swing game for this group. Huge swing game in my opinion, right? Huge swing game. And for me personally, as a fan, and I think I have a pretty good gauge on this fan base and the pulse of this fan base, if you will, 
I think we were all sort of looking for something, a win like this to get us excited for Gamecocks basketball. And all of a sudden now, guys, we wake up on this Friday and we say, man, I'm looking forward to the rest of basketball season. I'm looking forward to watching this team build and come together and, and put it all together, if you will. This was a game you needed on your home floor. Hey, you're rocking New Jersey's, which, by the way, the throwback Garnets were incredible. They were incredible. But everything was there to have a great night, and sure enough, it was, guys. Sure enough, it was, and, and just what a, what a great night it was, man. Just the, the most fun I've had at CLA in quite a long time. The, the energy was different. I can tell you that. The energy was different. It was fun. It was exciting. Um, and it was great to watch. It was great to watch. I mean, I, last night was one of those nights, guys. I don't want to go overboard here, but last night was one of those nights that, as you all know, like, is basketball my number one sport? No, it is not. I do love kind of basketball, but is it my number one? No. But last night was one of those nights that really reminded me, like, man, this is why I love kind of basketball, because that was fun. That was so much fun. And now, again, you have mistakes to correct. you got to clean it up in regards to turnovers and, and just making silly mistakes and self-inflicted errors, if you will. But I guess that's the beauty, too. Moving forward throughout the season, the mistakes are correctable, right? The mistakes are correctable. But the only take anyone should have today, the only take that is the correct take, that was a great win last night. That was a great win. So, hey, let's give a round of applause, kudos, acknowledge a job well done, a fantastic job by Frank Martin, that basketball team, the fans, all parties involved, because that was a very, very, very big early season non-conference victory. And, again, I think a victory that you can build on. You can build confidence. Now, now you know, hey, if we go out and play our best basketball, we can be a pretty damn good team. We can be a pretty damn good team. So, again, very excited now all of a sudden. The outlook changes, if you will. And, hey, shoot or shoot, baby. We're on. Basketball merch on the way. <laughs> it feels good to be good. Folks, on that note, you've heard me say that a lot, and I figured, you know what? I'm going to adopt that as the motto for this year's team. And why not also adopt it? for the motto for our game-by-game -game MVP awards. So guys, that's what we're going to call it, the Shooter Shoot Award, which is going to go to the game MVP for that specific game. And, guys, how fitting, how fitting that the inaugural Shooter Shoot Award would go to none other than the Rainmaker himself, who finally broke through. And I've had some – we've all had some fun at his expense thus far this season. But he finally breaks through. He finally has his coming out party, number 10, but number one in your hearts. Eric Stevenson, 15 points, leading the Gamecocks, six for nine on field goals. Nice. <laughs> three for five on his three-pointers. Also had three rebounds. Loved the way he played overall. Hey, one of my keys to the game was simply put, hit your open looks. And he did that starting three of three beyond the arc. Incredible, man. Again, it's, it's, it's wild how bad he looked a couple of games ago going, what, like 0 for 10 from three-point range or 0 for 10 from the field. But I'll tell you what, watching him get hot, watching him heat up and contribute with this basketball team, it, it was a sight to behold. It was just truly a thing of beauty. So, again, if he can stay consistent, now he's got to start to put some consi consistent performances together. But he could be that sharp shooter for you on the outside. One thing's for certain. <laughs> this dude's going to continue to pull it, which is why I think we all love it and we all respect it. It's like, you know what? I got to tip my cap to a guy that's just going to keep firing up shots. So, again, the Shooter Shoot Award, the inaugural Shooter Shoot Award, goes to none other than basically Mr. Shooter Shoot Shooter Shoot himself, Eric Stevenson. Congratulations, sir. Um, before we get off basketball, guys, move to football. What's next for this Gamecocks basketball team? And, guys, like I told you, Huge win because of the opportunity you now have to build momentum. The next game you have Tuesday night, November the 23rd at 7 p.m. against the Wofford Terriers, which will be a very intriguing matchup. Again, you know Wofford is going to want to come to CLA and get a win over the in-state school and the, you know, the University of South Carolina and Wofford, a very, very good basketball team. But, guys, not to look too far ahead, but you look at this schedule now. You beat UAB. You're 3-1. and one. 
Now you've got Wofford, Ryder, and at Coastal Carolina. Three very winnable games, right? You could realistically find yourself at 6-1 and one going into a Sunday matchup against the Georgetown Hoyas. The Georgetown Hoyas, a very proud basketball program. And then the following Sunday against Florida State. So I'm just saying you have the opportunity to build some big-time momentum early in this season. Also, guys, of note, that Wofford game, this will be the last game without Keyshawn Bryant. So, again, guys, that's Tuesday, November the 23rd against Wofford, 7 p.m. Yes, that's next week, so it is Thanksgiving week. I wonder what the turnout will be. But after tonight's game, I will tell you guys this again. You can do as you please. I'm not getting in your wallet. I'm not getting in your schedule. I'm not telling you, hey, you better go. You have to do this. But I'll tell you this, guys. I think this is going to be a very, very fun basketball team to watch. I highly suggest you make your way to Colonial Life Arena because, again, I understand we're all scarred from last year. We're scarred from the last last couple of seasons. I, I think you will be very pleasantly surprised at the product that is going to be on the floor this season. That's all I'm saying. Again, it doesn't mean we're going to win every game. Does it not mean that we're not going to have some moments where we want to rip our hair out? That's not what I'm saying, but this feels like this is going to be a really fun basketball team. I I think so. I think so. It's full of a bunch of really, really solid individual players. And if you can put those pieces together, who knows? Who knows? Maybe this can be a surprise team and be a team that we get talking late February, early March is on the bubble and maybe is competing for one of those spots for the NCAA tournament. So anyways, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but again, guys, I'm giddy on this Friday because it's been a long time since Gamecocks basketball got a win like this. And I'll tell you what, guys, after the season we had last year, dealing with COVID, winning six games, Gamecock fans, you have every right to celebrate this one and feel good about this one because your basketball team got a Big W last night. So, again, kudos to Frank Martin. Kudos to the guys. Kudos to the fans. What a night at CLA. And the Gamecocks now sit 3-1 and overall early in this 2021-2022 basketball season. All right, guys. Hey, let's move to the gridiron. As South Carolina, of course, tomorrow night takes on the Auburn Tigers. And I'm locking in my official prediction for tomorrow night's game. You take a look at this ball game, guys. Of course, we've talked all week. The storylines around this one, from Mike Bobo to a rematch of last year's game to the running back position with Tank Bigsby, Kevin Harris, some very, very good players carrying the football to TJ Finley taking over at quarterback who beat you last year at LSU. Two teams that I think very, very desperately need this win, need to bounce back. Gamecocks are going to punch their ticket to bowl eligibility. There's a lot on the line and a lot of storylines going into this ball game. You know, I said this in the preseason, and I said it last season as well, guys, but I'm going to reiterate it. I want to make it very clear. There is nothing about Auburn that scares me. There really is. There's nothing about Auburn that scares me. They are a better football team than I projected them to be this season under first-year head coach Brian Harson. I thought it was going to be more of a struggle than it has been. You take a look at their schedule. They've got some good wins against the likes of Arkansas, Ole Miss, a pair of teams that are right now currently ranked. They also come in this game on a two-game losing streak losing to Texas A&M and that abysmal loss last weekend, as we've mentioned prior, to Mississippi State. But Auburn is just not a football team that scares me. And they're not a football team that intimidates me either. I said that last year. We all looked at this game and said, you know what it feels like? The stars are aligning. The stars are aligning for a big Gamecocks upset. And sure enough, what happened? J.C. Horn happened, and you got the 30-22 to win. Now, the circumstances are obviously different this year. No Bo Nix due to an ankle injury. Tank Bigsby is having an incredible season, and you've got your own issues everywhere from, you know, your third-string quarterback, the offensive line, stopping the run, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The the keys in this one, 
we could spend a lot of time on, but they're very simple, right? Run the football, stop the run. Run the football, stop the run. That was the most disappointing part of last weekend, right? Nobody thinks or nobody thought, I think, that South Carolina was as good as how they looked against Florida. I don't think anybody thought, okay, well, you ran for 284 against Florida. That's who you are now. I don't think anyone thought that. But what we had hoped, what we had hoped is maybe South Carolina had made strides in regards to the run game and pass blocking and having an identity and stopping the run and all those areas that had given you so many problems turning the football over, protecting the football, being disciplined. You thought maybe, just maybe, this was a team that had used the bye week to turn the corner and eradicate some of those mistakes. And I think that's what was most disappointing in that loss to Mizzou last weekend, is that all of those same issues, all of those things that haunted you all throughout the season came back to bite you. You couldn't run the ball against an abysmal rush defense. You couldn't protect Jason Brown at all. You could not stop the run as Tyler Beatty ran for over 200 yards on you. You turned the football over four times. You were penalized more frequently than you were in the Florida game. It's like all these old issues came back to bite you. And the Gamecocks that we had seen in the first eight games that, for lack of a better way of putting it, could not get out of their own way. That's what we saw last weekend in Como. A lot of this game, guys, because I don't think Auburn are world beaters. I I don't. Are they more talented top to bottom than South Carolina? I would say most likely so, yes. I would say yes, they are. They are. But I don't see this Auburn team being world beaters. And And I said this earlier this week. It doesn't feel identical necessarily, and I'm not going to try to draw those those direct parallels, if you will, but this week has a lot of the vibe that Florida week had. And let me explain. In the sense of this, you come home off a loss to the friendly confines of Wiggins Bryce Stadium at night. You should be able to draw a pretty solid crowd. I feel confident in saying that. You've got an Auburn team that is licking its wounds. Again, guys, like I talked about it yesterday, what's the morale of this ball club? What is the, the mental state of this ball club right now after losing the way they did against Mississippi State, blowing a 28-3 to lead? In the process of that, you lose your starting quarterback. And, and I know some folks will look at T.J. Finley and point to last year's LSU game and say, oh, my God, he's going to do it again. He's going to rip us. Guys, I don't put any stock, and nor should you, in what happened last year in Baton Rouge. All that showed is that the six foot seven, 250 pound quarterback, if put in a good situation and you know has a wide open guy, he's got the ability. And, and a newsflash, guys, I didn't have to see that to tell you that. I mean, you don't go to LSU, you don't go to Auburn, you don't go to South Carolina, you don't go to an SEC school if you suck. Okay. You don't, you just don't. So the kid's obviously talented. But just because he had success last year at LSU against South Carolina, Does that mean he's going to have success tomorrow night? No, it does not. It's brand new personnel. It's brand new scheme. There's different coaches all over the place. It means absolutely nothing, in my opinion. And here's the key. The focus isn't on him anyways. It's all about Tank Bigsby and that running game. We know what Mike Bobo is going to want to do. We saw it all last season. And we know that he can scheme a run game. I talked yesterday, the chess match between Clayton White, Mike Bobo, going to be very intriguing to watch because Mike Bobo knows this team and knows its personnel. How does he decide to attack that? I can tell you one thing, the Gamecocks are not going to win allowing Tank Bigsby to run for anything near what Tyler Beatty did last week. On the flip side, again, coming home, to the friendly confines. You've played better football, in my opinion, on your home field, especially under the lights. But again, guys, it's boring. It's not fun to talk about. I know we'd rather talk about receiver. 
We'd rather talk about quarterback. We'd rather talk about running back, tight end, what have you. But it truly all comes down to that Carolina offensive line. This is a line of scrimmage ball game, guys. And I know I say that week to week to week, but put even more emphasis on it in this one. Because it is a pair of teams that kind of want to do the same thing, in my opinion, on both sides. They want to run the football, and they want to stop the run. That's going to be their goal, right? They want to run the football. They want to stop the run. They don't necessarily want to ask their quarterbacks to go win the game for them. That's going to be the game plan, I think, on both sides. Who can execute that more effectively? Who can execute that game plan more efficiently? That's who's going to win the game. Now, of course, hey, turnovers, penalties, self-inflicted wounds and errors, those things come into play. But if you really boil it down to it, the physicality and winning the battle in the trenches and winning up front, that's what's going to determine this ball game. And again, I know that sounds obvious. I know you guys probably get sick and tired of hearing me say that. But I think both these teams want to win that way. I think that's the difference in this game. And you look at the Gamecocks secondary, allowing just 185 yards per game to the air. I think the game plan for Clayton White will be stack the box. Make TJ Finley beat you. I would rather go down selling out against Bigsby and making T.J. Finley throw, then I would, you, you guys, you have no chance if Bigsby's running for five or six yards pop. You have no chance because that is so demoralizing for defense. You saw it last week. It broke the spirit of the Gamecocks defense. At some point, you just get worn down. At some point, you just get tired, right? And that's exactly what happened last week. Again, on the offensive side, you know, I think Jason Brown will have a great opportunity in the passing game, actually, believe it or not, because I think Auburn will key in as well and try to stop the run, right? We need to run the ball to be successful. Auburn has given up about 250 or 260 yards per game to the air. So there's opportunities there. Hey, Georgia State had success against them. There's opportunities there against that Auburn defense. Like I mentioned, though, at the end of the day, who can run the football? Who can stop the run? Who can be more physical? And who is going to win the battle in the trenches? I expect this South Carolina football team under the lights at Willie B to play much, much, much better football. And as I told you guys, after the loss to Mizzou, which was a terrible, tough loss, I totally get it. But the same reason why people are saying, Chris, we won't win another game. We're terrible. We're abysmal. It's the same reason why this Gamecocks football team might do something silly and just win its last two. Because this is a football team that, yes, you are who you are, right? The Gamecocks are who we thought they were. Those issues they had, they didn't go anywhere. But it's a team that also showed you that under the lights, at home, if things line up, this is a team that can play its best football and can do something crazy and win a game it's not supposed to. Like I told you guys early in the week, I expect this to be a close ball game. I think it's going to be a very back-and-forth ball game. Gamecocks plus six and a half. If you can get the seven, if you can get the seven in the hook, it's a no-brainer bet, in my opinion. No-brainer bet. I think it's a very, very tight ball game. Auburn does not intimidate me. You beat this team last year. You should have all the confidence in the world going into this ball game tomorrow night. With that being said, who do I trust more to win at the point of attack, protect their quarterback, establish the line of scrimmage, and run the football consistently? South Carolina will play better football tomorrow night. They will. I really believe they will. But the Gamecocks showed you who they were last weekend. The Gamecocks reverted back to their old ways. And we saw Florida against Sanford, right, and their issues and the fact that they've just checked out on this season. Call it for what it is. They have checked out. Okay. What is the morale? What's the mindset of this Auburn team? That's the greatest coaching staff, by the way, of both these staffs, getting their respective teams up and ready to play. 
If the Gamecocks can strike early, if they can punch Auburn in the mouth early, I think that'll go a long win this ball game. But guys, again, right now, I can't trust this Carolina offensive line to be consistent enough to win the game. Will they be as bad as they were last week? Not necessarily, but what scares me in this game is you look at this Auburn roster, you look at their statistics. I challenge you, go look at the stats. You look at the sack numbers, five sacks, five sacks, seven sacks, three sacks, four sacks, seven sacks, four sacks, seven sacks. They got pass rushers. They've got guys that can get after the quarterback. They've got talented players on that defense. And I think that, honestly, guys, I think that's the difference. I think that's the difference. I think that Tank Bigsby is going to get his yards offensively for Auburn. I think Mike Bobo, you know, it's funny. We're talking about Mike Bobo all this week and how, you know, we want to stick it to Bobo and F Bobo. We hate Bobo. If you don't think Mike Bobo wants to stick it to us just as bad as we want to stick it to him, you, you, you got it twisted. You don't appreciate the pettiness level of this human being. The Auburn running attack will be more consistent. I don't think T.J. Finley will be asked to do a ton. I think Salcon will be able to force mistakes to T.J. Finley. I think they'll be able to pick him off a few times. Right? I think Jason Brown will play another very Jason Brown type of game. I think he'll be solid. Obviously, taking care of the football is the absolute number one priority for him. But at the end of the day, line of scrimmage wins ball games, and, and I just cannot right now, guys, in good conscience, after watching this team and the way they played last weekend, I, I cannot, I cannot put my faith in that group to play good enough football to win a game against an Auburn team that's not great, that doesn't scare me, but is a quality opponent. They are a quality opponent. They've got good football players, and I think their guys will be better than your guys, especially where it counts most, which is in the trenches. And that will be the difference in this one. I think Tank Bigsby, you contain him, but he will get his yardage. I see Tank Bigsby going for at least 100. And I just, I don't know, guys. There's just not, I have not seen enough. Can this team also get out of its own way? Something that we saw a flash of it in Florida, but I think we all understand and realize and come to grips with Florida was more of the exception. Florida was not the rule. Florida was the exception. Florida was not the rule. Again, this team is somewhere in between that win over Florida and we'll say the loss to Mizzou or a one-point win over Vanderbilt. But I think what the loss to Mizzou showed us, they're closer to the one-point win over Vandy than they are to what they did against Florida. This team is not the one that beat Florida by 23 points. And unfortunately, I don't think Auburn has quit on this season. Again, they'll run the ball more consistently. I think, unfortunately, Jason Brown will be under pressure. You're not probably going to be able to establish enough of a ground game. Again, I think the Gamecocks play better football, but I think it comes short in a losing effort. Guys, give me the Auburn Tigers taking down South kind of final score. Tigers 24, Gamecocks 20. Again, I think it's a very back-and-forth game, close game, fourth-quarter game. Who do I trust more right now? Unfortunately, I've got to lead with Auburn. I picked this, by the way, in the preseason as a 38-27 to South Carolina victory. So I think very well the Gamecocks could get the job done. But we're going to have to see a completely different offensive line than what we saw last week. And really a completely different football team. Taking care of the football, winning at the point of attack, getting out of your own way, not making dumb mistakes. If you can do those things, if you can just play fundamentally sound football and get out of your own way, the Gamecocks have a great chance to win this one. But we have not seen that on a consistent enough basis to go out on a limb and predict that will happen again. Again, the Florida performance and what you did in that game, that's the one-off. That's the exception. That's not the rule. So, again, guys, unfortunately, I've got Auburn getting the win 24-20. to 20. I think it's a really, really close back and forth game, but an effort in which the Gamecocks come up just short. So again, guys, that is my prediction. I'm locking it in. Auburn 24, South Carolina 20. Would love to hear from you guys, your thoughts, your predictions. Drop them below in the comments as we continue to count down the seconds to kickoff. As the Gamecocks take on the Auburn Tigers tomorrow night under the lights, 7 o'clock kick 
on the SEC Network. Folks, again, appreciate you all tuning in. That's going to do it all for me. That's going to do it all for us. Hey, thanks for making this another very successful week from the content, the merch, the podcast, the Daily Crow, of course, guys. Again, thank you all so much. The continued love and support. You guys continue to rock and roll with everything that we do, guys. Until next time, I'm going to leave you with this. Go Cox, beat Auburn, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Thank you.